So uh, we are, uh, well, me and Alex, we are in an organization called the Undergraduate Research Network, which is a special group that uh, assists students in uh, finding you know, internships and you know, lab experience. So we are here today actually to interview Professor Reynolds on just some of the common things that an undergrad uh, would you know, like to know before they actually do the application or they try to find um, an internship. So uh, let's first you know, let Professor Reynolds introduce himself a little bit if you can move this into a more friendly zone. Greetings, uh, I'm Professor Reynolds, I'm Paul Reynolds, uh, I've been on the computer science faculty for 31 years now. well as a number of graduate students. And I think undergraduate research is very important. Uh, and, and so I support this effort very strongly. All right, so we'll begin now. Um, so uh, the first and most obvious question would be, you know, what would an, undergrad, uh, what would an undergraduate do to make, to make himself or herself more attractive as an you know, undergraduate re reading research? Well, I think that uh, <coughs> having a good, uh, a, a good start in the discipline in which uh, the student is interested in doing research is very important, but I don't want to overemphasize that because students uh, shouldn't feel as though they have to know everything a graduate student would know in order to begin uh, to engage in research. That's not true at all. I think most faculty will work with students uh, to help them learn what they need to learn to engage in a research project. So, so for example, for yourself, would you, you know, prefer a student with a lot of CS back, computer science background, or you know, some some new student who's interested in computer science but really don't have that much experience with coding and design? And that oh, I think uh, I'm interested in both. I have worked with students who, uh, from the day they arrived on grounds, and I have worked with many uh, generally senior thesis students who started with me at the end of their third year or beginning of fourth year. So the preference is a matter of of need. If I need someone to put together some sophisticated code to, in support of a research project, sure, I'm more likely to look for someone who is third or fourth level. But if I'm looking to work with someone who is interested in learning how to conduct research and willing to invest the time in it, um, many faculty here will start with students uh, right after they arrive on ground. So anywhere in between there. All right, thank you. Uh, so, well, next, you know, what would a typical what would a typical typical day be like for an undergraduate? research if they were working with their lab? Well, if they were working with me, first of all, there is no real lab uh, for me. Uh, uh, some, some of my colleagues in computer science have labs, I do not. So a typical day would uh, frankly be the student working on their own uh, in a place of their choosing, uh, whether you're at home or, or uh, in the library or something like that. Um, uh, for many of my students, uh, the, the contact is with me is a little more than once a week. Often meet with some of my graduate students on a more frequent basis. So most of it is meetings and, and uh, working independently or in small groups, portions of or, 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 or subsets of the students who are working on a particular research project. What do you think is the best time for an undergraduate to begin to get involved in research? It depends on the undergraduate. Um, if uh, for anyone who is coming to UVA and knows or is fairly certain that they like to head on to graduate school sometime after leaving UVA, I would say no later than about the second year. Um, uh, as I said earlier, I have worked with students from the day they arrived on grounds uh, because they came here knowing they, they wanted to do research as a part of their undergraduate education. But uh, you don't have to start then uh, in computer science. Many students uh, taking their second year of undergraduate seminar get interested in research after being exposed to it uh, through this, this seminar. Um, I wouldn't wait much past about the second semester of their third year. It's getting pretty late at that point to actually be able to become engaged in any meaningful activity. I would totally agree with that. Um, my professor actually said he wouldn't take third or four courses too because they're, they're already kind of nearing the end of their mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, So well then, that brings up the question, you know, how is how would an undergrad how would you like an undergraduate to approach you? You know, email, personal, or just what do you prefer? I've been asked this question uh, many times, uh, or I have simply taken the initiative with uh, uh, students uh, uh, I've spoken to, 
And what I say is uh, the best approach is to go off and read the web pages of the uh, faculty who um, are associated with the department uh, that you're interested in. And of course, you're not going to understand everything you find on those web pages, but you'll get a feel for what they're interested in, you know, whether it's cyber physical systems or computer security or something in, in another discipline, nanotechnology. Um, uh, the point is to prepare yourself before going to speak to a professor uh, by simply being knowledgeable about what their interests are. Uh, and then uh, you should feel free to go and knock on the door of that faculty member. We're, we're not nasty people. We don't <laughs> say rude things to you. Most of the time, at least I hope, I, you know, my colleagues, I think, are all very welcoming uh, towards undergraduates. And what you want to do is knock on the professor's door and say, is there a time I can talk to you about perhaps collaborating with you on your, your research? Or conducting some independent research of my own that you supervise uh, and, and uh, try to set a time with the professor. And when you, you uh, then go and meet with the professor, what you want to say is, hey, you know, I, I have looked at your web pages and I noticed that you're interested in, in uh, topic A and topic B. <coughs> and I think uh, topic A really interests me. Uh, it looks like you have goals and objectives there that, that, that suit me, and I wonder if there is some way that I can contribute to that project and start the discussion. So, so, so definitely, if, if I wanted to, you know, uh, research in your lab, I if I read, you know, some articles that you publish or some things that were pertinent to your to your research and then talk to you about it, that would be great, like a great way to start. Yeah, what you want to do is not go in cold. You want to go in with some idea of what the person that you're speaking to uh, is interested in. And presumably, you're there because you're interested in what they're interested in. And so you start that conversation. And then the faculty should, should pick it up uh, and, and um, engage you in conversation, discover what your interests are, see how interests uh, align. And um, you know, the next step there, in, in my case, often what I do is think about some papers that the students could read where what I say to them is, you may only understand 50 or 60% of this paper, but it's worth your time looking at this. It will help you understand more of what we're doing. And also, let me introduce you to my two PhD students, Michael and Ross. You should feel free to sit and chat with them anytime you like and send them questions. They're very friendly people and they will help you out also. And you should feel that uh, whenever you have a question, you're free to come and Um, so, so hypothetically, I get into your lab. Um, you know, what would you expect me to do? You know, like in terms of work papers or like. Well, uh, I, again, uh, you know, I, I don't actually have a lab, right? Um, uh, uh, intentionally, but um, uh, yeah, I would expect you to be uh, reading papers at the appropriate time. I would expect you to be working with uh, uh, some of my graduate students because usually I get my graduates and my undergraduates working together. They're fairly close in age, they're very close in objectives, uh, what, what objectives they have, and, and that kind of relationship almost always works out very well uh, and gives the undergraduate a role model and someone who can address a lot of their questions when the faculty are off doing their faculty work. Uh, but um, what you would be doing, to go back to your question there, would be to uh, doing some creative thinking along uh, a path where we've agreed that you would like to do that creative thinking, to be gathering your thoughts, to be writing your thoughts down, to be co-authoring papers that are going off to conferences or journals, uh, and to uh, attend routine research meetings, and uh, to uh, do everything you can to get the best experience you can out of this, this opportunity. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, uh, this concludes our interview with Sarsha. All right, can I, say, yeah, can I say one more? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Um, one thing that I don't think you've, you've asked quite enough about is how important is it to engage in this kind of activity with your Very undergraduates? True. Very true. And um, I have been telling my undergraduates for a number of years now that the graduates coming into the computer science program here at UVA more and more have published as undergraduates. I believe to be a competitive candidate for top graduate programs, you have got to have engaged in research as an undergraduate now and gotten your name on one or more publications and 
you have positioned yourself so that if a member of a faculty can write a letter that says, you know how to engage in independent uh, research um, and, and, and do it well. Uh, a letter like that carries at least as much weight as a, a GPA and a GRE score. Wow, it's really important. All right, well, that concludes it. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Sure. Is that what you wanted? Yeah.